Hey guys, welcome to the explanation video of the Soup Stevo collab. And this is going to be interesting because Stevo made the level, but I'm going to be voicing over uh, just because I thought it would be kind of fun and interesting and something new for me to try out. So, yeah. So let's get started. So, this first room was very self-explanatory. We had just a kaizu up here and a muncher with a claw on top. So that was all there was to that. Uh, this part is weird because the cannon shoots out a muncher or uh, a piranha plant. But in this, with this configuration here, it just goes straight through the P-blocks, and it's kind of crazy jank. Um, it also works with big wigglers, interestingly. So, yeah. So the second room is also pretty uh, simple. We have just this little protrusion thing here from slopes, from two slopes, separate slopes, hidden behind the saw, and that makes the shell go back. We also have a fairly simple setup right here. So since this is a vertical sub area, when once you get on the spring that's down here, you will head up, you will spring up to this area, and right about at this point, this spike ball will spawn in the blue state. And will immediately hit the on-off switch, which will make you plow into the spikes when you think that these blocks are safe. So that was, it, it's a very simple setup. So for this next part, we have some classic Nintendo slope jank here. So all that happens here is that this, once you get the shell mint uh, and boop this muncher up, one block, these two get squished together into one space. And then it looks like you can go and grab the sword ease, uh, and, and be perfectly fine. But the problem is that once this muncher, uh, once you leave this space with the shelmet on, this muncher comes back down. And then the two munchers that were up here that were condensed into one block uh, suddenly become two munchers. So what happens is this muncher falls down and then one of the two munchers that were up here also falls from from that one space so so you have three munchers stacked on this three block space and then you can't come back up so that was the whole setup there so this troll is also very self-explanatory the you have um a kaizo indicator here and the whole point of this was to bait people to check the kaizo to see if there was even a kaizo there to hit so the whole idea is that you come over here and then a muncher just shoves you off the edge there so this troll was um this troll was interesting because uh it, it caused a lot more confusion than we thought it would uh, so what happens is you come down here and decide and to try to run at the fire flower, except the claw actually drops the fire flower. And th at that same instant, it, it is able to either grab anybody on either side of the, of the claw. So what you're supposed to do is come up to the claw and let it release the fire flower so that the claw then settles down. So that's what this block here behind the saw is for, and that is to push this fire flower up onto this semi-solid ledge, and that kind of com compresses this this claw, which makes it able to grab people from either side. So once you release the fire flower onto the semi-solid, the claw then comes back down into its original position and is no longer able to grab you. So that's how that works. All right, so this room was really fun. So we had two options here. You could either go into this pipe that doesn't go anywhere, or you could go into the shiny 
area over here and uh, it looks like a simple room except there's definitely more going on so this is this is Stevo's setup here what happens is that it's a progressive power up so you try to grab the fire flower on the previous room but you fail so then you just go in the door at this point so when you go in the door small this is what happens So if you noticed, the mushroom just hits this note block, which booped the bomb and uh, which booped the bomb below the blue platform. So that just breaks this entire mole contraption here, and it just doesn't work. If you come in big, then the fire flower doesn't do anything, and the contraption works perfectly fine. So if you noticed, let me go back and show you again. All right, so the bomb, the mole explodes the bomb, which broke the hard block below the launcher, which boops it up into the P switch. So this acts as an inst as a nearly instant P switch activator when you when you go past the mole's point. So this was all to push the player off the edge because since they were tall enough to collect the coins on the blue platform below. This is a simple setup to allow the player to come over to this shiny area and let the thwomp activate the P-switch the first time around. However, on the second time around when you come in big, this contraption activates, which kills the thwomp and the P-switch and bomb all together. So it's, it kind of eliminates everything at once. See, there's coins behind all of this stuff. So this P-switch up here will act as the primary P-switch once you come in big and start progressing. So it just destroys all of this stuff. And the bomb takes care of the rest. So this is very interesting jank right here. We have a piranha plant, a launcher, and an icicle under the launcher. What happens is the player stands right here, um, not quite sure what to do, and suddenly the piranha dies because the piranha is cl clipped into the launcher just barely. But when you put a when you put a piranha in a two space gap like this with a with an entity on the, on the bottom, it clips into that entity just barely enough to make it interact with this icicle here. So it's very counterintuitive and cool little jank there. So up here, if anyone ever fall for it, this is what happens. You just get sucked up into oblivion and you jump into the question block which holds a potabo and you die that way. Okay, so this is the crazy part. So this whole setup here is to get the twister to this this blowy joey here to to light speed over to this area over here. So what happens is the player comes over here, either gets the mushroom or doesn't, and the decision there does not matter. So you have a thwomp above the level here, and once you get to that point, the thwomp activates, and this whole contraption just fires off, and it's really crazy. Here, I'll show you exactly how it works. Okay, so, so when you first enter the room, this bomb hits this note block, which pushes this muncher which squishes the bomb and then hits the on off. So the whole point of this bottom part here is to switch the state once you enter the room and also to prepare to set up this contraption here. So the first thing that also happens up here is this mushroom hits this note block, which 
pushes the muncher into this area here. So if you notice, this muncher actually clips into this POW here, but actually pushes the top POW above, which holds the blowy joey. So what happens, I can't really explain, but it just works this way. <laughs> so do you see? It's, it's really, really wild. I'll show it again. But you're seeing what I'm seeing, and I can't really explain it. It just happens. So the blowy joey somehow goes off the pow and just light speeds over there. Okay, so this is a pretty good frame here. So the muncher dies, both pows die, it seems. Or this pow somehow... See, somehow the top pow is what gave the twister momentum. So it suddenly shot over here. Nah, I'm not sure how it happens, but yeah, you're seeing what I'm seeing. This is steve -O's setup, and yeah, it's, it's, it's all steve -O magic. Okay, so this is the checkpoint one room. Uh, the setup for the door was very simple. It just leads to above the checkpoint one and just dumps you on it. The goal is right behind this wall here. And we just have a simple goal reveal if you decide to go in the door. So if you turn the switch off, then and reset the room it spawns this spike ball which is able to go up the slope and and hit the blocks all right so first room after checkpoint one so this whole block the the point of this block here is if you remember the twister uh the light speed twister room uh it broke the it broke the wall and scrolled the screen horizontally. So since this is the vertical sub area that it was in before, we have to repair the wall by killing the player at this point, because otherwise the the horizontal scrolling will continue in the sub world, uh, because you have to have a scroll stop down the entire length of the vertical sub area. So you can't. Uh, so, if you were to progress at the first try after CP1, then the screen would continue to scroll, and it's just not pretty. So, we just wanted to get rid of that ugly factor. So, this troll here is also very interesting. Uh, the whole idea was to get the player to overthink, because you can see just barely the semi-solid behind the P-switches. So what they're supposed to think is, oh, you shouldn't go into this safe looking area here because otherwise you'll die. Uh, but what happens is when you hit the P switch at this point right here and stay put, these blocks activate. And what happens, just like the other time where there's, a, there's an icicle behind it, this piranha clips into these two entities just barely, but the spring pushes this uh, this piranha out from its position and onto the player's head. All right, so the idea with this was to get the player to jump for the 30 coin but not actually touch the mushroom yet. So the whole point of this setup here was to get the player to notice this one way behind the door and realize that they can't get the mushroom safely because they'll just get stuck on this on this gap here and not be able to fit. So what happens is they go in the door small and this is a stupid Stevo setup right here where you have the typical just jump over the gap troll and and a Mecha Koopa shooting on off blocks. So you think to jump because it's gonna switch the states, but that's exactly what just doesn't happen. And it's hilarious and funny. So this is the setup for the progressive power-up. You have uh, 
it's very simple. This is uh, a mushroom. If you come in small, the mushroom just goes off the cloud there. If you come in big by getting that mega shroom in the other room, the fire flower stays on the cloud and then it's able to hit this block, which then pushes the thwomp over into position to be able to activate uh, on a position based jump. So what happens is you just jump straight into the blue blocks here. right here so once you come in big you just jump straight into this into these blocks it's a very simple twice twice room very similar to the skull platform one in the first section so this room was a little bit later but what happens is the the troll here is that the player puts a bomb here to activate the switch which would supposedly open up this door here but what happens is this this skull platform interacts with these by taking the weight of them entirely so what happens is there's no more weight on this side and there's weight on this side so this side suddenly goes down which pushes these guys up and this bomb explodes instantly that way You can see how the skull platform just kind of steals the weight on this side. So this was a very simple troll. You just have a bunch of magic koopas above this just to make you wait and think. So this is the setup that everybody was so curious about. This little one pixel vibrating cannon here and the setup is extremely simple this is it right here so it's just a clown car with a muncher inside of it and a launcher on top of it so what happens is it vibrates in one pixel of space and it's extremely fast too so what ends up happening is the bomb just explodes instantly and you can't get a bomb in there at all ever another interesting thing here is that this clown car the whole purpose of this clown car here is to mask the sound of this clown car below because if we don't have if we don't have this upper clown car here then this clown car's noise is very faint and it also raises suspicion. So having a clown car on screen and that the player is able to see is a lot better than having something that they can't see, but they can still hear. All right, so this next room is, is quite complex. Uh, if you notice this, this room, this door leads to this room over here, this platforming section. So what happens is this potabo heads over to this room to melt some blocks so these cannons right here we want to be able to stick to this launcher but we can't initially because they can only stick to hard blocks so what happens is this potabo comes over here initially to melt some blocks behind this cannon right there so what happens is once you respawn in the room after these blocks are melted then this then these cannons will stick to the launcher and do what they're supposed to do so you can see how the potabo melts the blocks right there so once you reset the room the cannons are now stuck to the launcher so what happens is you jump over this cannonball the first time, if you recall, and then you hit the on off switch up here. So the first time you hit the on off switch, this is what happens. This mushroom comes above here and uh, these cannons also go down. So the whole point of these cannons is to hide an arrow 
for the hint in case anybody gets really confused. So the second time you hit it, well actually, so what happens is you go into this area over here and there's a thwomp off screen that hits an on off block. Let me see if I can find it. So right here, once you head into this gap here, this on this thwomp activates this on off switch. So this is all for the second time that it that you hit the on off switch. So this so once the thwomp hits the on off switch, this this one up block hits this note block, which interestingly with this setup down here pushes this launcher inside of this bigger launcher because this just works with this setup here with the pow on top of the of, of the primary launcher that it's supposed to clip into and you have a conveyor that is that is also pushing this inside so what happens is this launcher has nowhere to go so it just light speeds above this cannon here and just rests on it So now you can see the bottom of this bigger launcher is now on top of this one and it just happens so fast. And what ends up happening is this cannon on the bottom pushes this cannon above and it's it's all based on slope jank. So, of course. So, you have this cannon that is getting squeezed up into this area by this cannon. And it has nowhere to go but through this launcher. And it's just random silly jank that we found that we thought it'd be really funny to include in the level. So this is the setup for the for the spike ball that kills the cannonball. So you have over here a question mark block with a, with a wing spring in it. You have a spike ball with the note block with a spike ball in it and a bait spring with three kinds of three kinds of blocks here. So what happens when you head over here and hit the on off block, this allows the mole to go left now. So on your way back over, if you try to jump on the cannonball, this happens. So if you notice, the mole immediately hits this shell into this note block, which instantly spawns this spike ball and kills the cannonball. So you just jump into the pit this way because, yeah. So what happens is this shell hits these on these question mark these Kaizo blocks here, and and then comes over to this and hits. The cannon which releases the and hits this block which releases the spring and interestingly enough this is stevo's uh section here but what happened was um this whole setup was super convenient to hit these blocks right here the whole the original purpose of these kaizo blocks hold on one sec the original purpose of these kaizo blocks right here was to avoid getting, uh, was to ensure that people die when they come down here. Because since this is a horizontal screen, since this is a horizontal, this is the main world with a horizontal section, uh, we use custom scrolls so that we are able to hide sections more easily. So what happens is for custom scrolling, uh, in the main world, the screen does not scroll vertically, and the screen just stays fixed with custom scrolling only. With auto, with uh, normal auto scroll, the screen actually does scroll vertically in the subset in in the main world, which is really interesting. So what ended up happening is sometimes since the the death area only extends about four blocks below where the screen actually looks at like uh you can actually jump down here and survive on say this note block and jump up 
So the whole point of these Kaizo blocks was initially to keep the player from dying. But once this setup happened, uh, we just kind of went with it. And uh, yeah, we just added this stupid spring here because like, why not, right? Because this shell was activating these two blocks unintentionally. So yeah. All right, so this is one of the first backtracking rooms the player comes to. So interestingly, if you get this shiny coin right here, this mole spawns and uh, the cannon and the mole are able to exist in this one half tile space right here. So the cannon just is essentially extending beyond the slope and is able to deflect the shell back. It is just some simple good old fashioned Nintendo slope jig there. So this setup up here uh, is also a little complicated. So what we have is the Bowser Jr. to to stop the player when they hit this nope this uh, donut block down here. So this donut block is just within range of this thwomp over here. These munchers right here are safety munchers for when you hit this pow back here. So for the vertical subworld, only you only get two blocks of spawning space. So anything above that just won't spawn when the screen is scrolled or when the screen scroll is stopped. So that's why we had to put the muncher and the bomb over here because uh, because we can't, if the thwomp is up here, then it won't spawn and it just won't work properly and break the bomb. So the bomb had to physically walk over here because in order to protect it from the pow, we had to put it over here with a protective muncher on it. So once the thwomp hits the bomb here, uh, the screen it breaks this block, which then instantly scrolls the screen up. So once you come over here, this is exactly what happens. The thwomp activates and the screen scrolls up. And once that happens, this Bowser Jr. and this block to kill Bowser Jr. spawns because of the screen scrolling. So if you notice, this is a lot like the infinite ground pound stun from Bowser Jr. And that's exactly what it is, except it's not infinite. It's just used in this case to instantly make him uh, ground pound. And that's all there is to this part here. So on your way back through this room, we have a block here to hit this on, to hit, to hit here with Link. So this is a winged pow in here. There's a bomb right behind this cursor here. And this bomb explodes an off-screen pow right here. Uh, an off-screen hard block which activates this POW. And this POW is positioned so that it does not hit this mole up here. So the whole point of this mole right here is to keep this cannon from moving on this conveyor belt because, because since you can stack a mole on top of a cannon, this mole is spawned inside of this conveyor belt which keeps the cannon from moving on this conveyor belt so once you hit the pow over here or once you hit the this winged pow this the winged pow will kill this this mole which then immediately makes this uh cannon go left and and destroy and uh squish the bomb here which then explodes this block so what? So again, this muncher right here is a protective muncher uh, from when you hit the winged pow, so that the muncher dies, but not the but not the bomb. Okay, so this room was kind of fun, also. So what we have is a shiny, another shiny sword here. We have. Um, we have a sword here that drops when you come over to this area. So when you come into this room, it's on the blue state. So 
what happens is this muncher does not spawn initially. This is for when you come back through uh, the second time after CP2. So, so interestingly, when you spawn in this room from this pipe, this semi-solid, the top of this semi-solid is not visible. The only part that you can see is the very top of this, is the very bottom of this semi-solid right here. So this is the cutoff point for the view. And it's just enough so that you can think that you'll be safe by jumping on this spring. But instead you just get sucked up into oblivion and what you do is you jump up onto this platform here and this platform takes you for a nice ride across the map and then dumps you into this little uh, little fun area here. So there was a lot of constraints that we had to work on for this room because of a couple things. So since this is a horizontal scroll area with custom scrolling, uh, Mario cannot go above a certain point in the map. So this space right here is the highest that Mario can go without going higher. So if you were to jump right here off, off screen, you would, you would hit an invisible wall right here because Mario just cannot proceed any higher than that. So we had to position this such that it was high enough that Mario could jump on but and also high enough to avoid all of this stuff over here and to avoid dying so this was definitely quite a workaround that we had to do here another thing to point out is that uh, we this track cannot curve up at all otherwise uh, it would squish Mario completely so if we were to have the track down here, say, if the track just goes up anywhere off screen, then it just squishes Mario, which is really interesting. So we had to keep the track horizontal throughout the whole way. So that was another big constraint we had. So up here, it's just a simple power block. So when you come into the room, you only see this power block, but you can't see the all of this crap above it. So you just think to mindlessly, the player is supposed to underthink. <clears throat> and once they see this, the sword fall, they just immediately try to arrow the piranha because they've either, they've either dodged the previous troll and thought, wow, I'm so smart or, you know, whatever else. So they're just supposed to underthink it and, and attack the piranha mindlessly here. So the CP2 room is very simple. You just have these wonderful Kaizo blocks here that I put in for for fun. And uh, yeah, I just wanted everyone to be very happy with these Kaizo blocks and have a good time. So when you come back through this room the second time, uh, you're able to blow up these blocks with Link. And this is an interesting setup because what happens is the fire bar is kind of inside this cannon. So once you hit these blocks with Link, the fire, the fire bar just kind of instantly pushes this cannon uh, into view and, and is able to shoot a cannon at the player supposedly but it was it wasn't really it didn't work out too well it just kind of was fun and you know interesting okay so once the player comes back into this room they go through this part which they hit the pow to destroy the bomb over here and then they come down here and a nice long safe looking corridor exists but the whole point of this was to give the player a false sense of security and and a wonderful mole with a boo just pops up out of the ground and 
and smiles at the player as they get wrecked. So this was the twice twice room here. And if you can see, uh, this pipe does not lead anywhere. And also the semi salt, does not exist on these munchers anymore as the real room did. So what happens is they don't think to look up here because the room looks the same. And at this point they're thinking, oh wow, I'm actually going all the way back to the key door now. So they run straight for the pipe and this thwomp activates the P-switch, which then sends the munchers down onto their heads and and uh, a new P-block behind this launcher exists to destroy the cannon and reveal the door behind it. So the last room was also interesting. So we have the same mole boo contraption. Now the whole point of both of the mole and boo contraption was to was to also make the player think about the boo, the random boo that was just sitting up here. So I know that Defender and uh, I think maybe Geek also noticed the boo, but when they came back through the room, uh, the boo, the, they realized the purpose of the boo. So that was another part of the the twice twice aspect uh, of Stevo's idea, and uh, it was really well done, actually. So this mole and boo has a different interaction. So what we figured out uh, by pure dumb luck was that the mole only comes up when you get near its ground point that it comes up at. So so essentially what I'm saying is that if you come over here the mole does not come up at all. But once you jump you get near enough to the point where the mole does come up at that the mole starts to do its thing. And that's how the boo moves up which then screws the player if they try to get this coin here. So this part here, uh, we had to put the cannon all the way up here because otherwise it just sticks. It just sticks to the wall. This block here has a potable in it, so when it goes up, it melts this block, which releases the one up and then hits a boo right here. So the point of this was to scare the player into going up to this also safe spot right here and they would get screwed by the boo that way. And as you can see the cannon just sticks to the wall so we had to put it above up there. And this is the actual room now. At this point, the player is at, in the final room right before the CP1 key door area. So yeah, that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this explanation. It was quite a bit of fun to do. Uh, Steve-O and I definitely worked on a lot of the trolls together, and uh, it was a really fun project. So yeah, uh, I'm glad. I'm super glad that the level turned out really successfully. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you again sometime.